Today on Mr. Teslanian, we're going to 3D print a brand new Tesla turbine to replace the old 3D printed Tesla turbine that I built about two years ago that I used to produce hydroelectric power that powers my 3D print farm. Today's design is going to be basically the same thing as the old original design. We're just going to change up some of the parameters. So the first thing that I've done that I noticed was a problem with the old design is that I've changed the thickness of the blades and I've also changed the thickness of the gap between each one of the blades. The old spacers that we use between the blades, which are the green piece that you see right here, go ahead and zoom in on this. The old spacers, this piece right here, was about two millimeters thick. The new spacers are going to only be one millimeter thick. That should help us increase the amount of boundary layer effect that we get between each one of these blades. Now the blades themselves have also changed up a little bit. The old blades were 2.10 millimeters thick. The new blades are only going to be 1.5 millimeters thick. And the reason we can get away with that is that we're actually going to be printing out of either carbon fiber nylon or carbon fiber PET. We are going to use both of those materials today. We're going to print one rotor out of the carbon fiber PET. We're going to print the other rotor out of the carbon fiber nylon and just see which one of them works. Nylon can have some issues when it comes to water. So I have a feeling the nylon one might not be the best. Carbon fiber PET, on the other hand, is a great material. It's extremely strong and it doesn't react to moisture like nylon does. So I have a feeling the carbon fiber PET is definitely going to be the one that works the best. But we're going to give it a try on both of them just to see. So let me go ahead and change the perspective here on the rotor for you so you can see what we've got going on. You can see kind of the gaps between each one of the blades there. Now we've reduced the number of blades in this design by quite a bit compared to the old design. And to show you that, let me go ahead and back out the screen just a little bit. We'll center that for you. Let's go ahead and go back out just a little bit further. We'll grab the case from the old original design. You can see how big that case is. Today's case is only this big. So you can see we've reduced the amount of blades that we're going to have in our turbine by about two thirds. I noticed with the limited amount of hydro flow I was able to actually devote to this turbine, it seemed like I had way too many blades in there. I have a feeling the overabundance of blades was hindering the actual power production. We're going to go ahead and test that out today by printing a much smaller turbine with a lot less blades. So let's go ahead and get those cases out of the way here once again. Now you can see here this case has got the bearing holder. Let me go ahead and zoom in for you on there. You can see the bearing holder in the bottom right there. You can see one of the inputs over here on the back. And right here on the side you can see another one of the inputs. Let me go ahead and change that up a little bit so you can see that. And we'll change the perspective angle. So you can see it's a flared opening going into there. You can see the flared opening right here going down to a smaller hole. What this allows me to do is change the angle of impact from you know, a really steep angle to a very narrow angle because the tuning of the angle of the impact of the hydro flow into the turbine is pretty crucial when it comes to actually getting to run just right. So we want a flared opening so we can mess with that. In the end, once I find out what the angle is that makes this one run perfectly, I'll be able to glue in a piece permanently in there at that angle and then I'll allow us to keep that angle throughout the entire running session of this turbine which is hopefully going to be many many years. Let's go ahead and back back out just a little bit here so you can see some of the rest of the parts. Since the back on this case is already designed into the case itself, all we're going to need is the front section right here with the output holes. You can see the bearing holder on those right there. These are going to be 8 millimeter bearings. It's going to be an 8 millimeter drive shaft that we're going to use to go through all this. And we're going to 3D print that drive shaft out of carbon fiber PET. Over the last few years, I've built a bunch of different generators from wind to hydroelectric generators that all use 3D printed drive shafts as long as you have a real metal bearing system in there. So all the friction is actually on the metal bearings and not on the drive shaft. The 3D printed drive shafts seem to work just fine for these things. We're going to use carbon fiber PET for the drive shaft on each one of these because that material seems to hold up really, really well and it doesn't flex or bend with any of the stress. So you can see here this is going to be basically the entire turbine. We've got the outer front case with the output holes. We've got the main case with the input holes on the sides down here towards the bottom. We've got all of our rotors right here with our spacers. And that's basically everything we're going to need. Let's go ahead and do the next step of this, which is to send over our parts to the slicer. We'll get it sliced up, get it on the flash drive, and get it over to the Creality K1C. So we've cleared the build plate. Let's go ahead and do the next part of this. We're going to put the case on there. We're going to print the case at a PETG. So let's go over here to our material. We'll go generic PETG. The PETG is going to work just fine for the case. It's a good, strong material. So let's go ahead and go down to uh, our 
strength of the object here. We're going to want three perimeter walls at least, so let's go ahead and go three perimeter walls. We're going to go down to infill, let's go ahead and go, uh, let's go 70% infill on that, which is basically full infill, just going to give a little bit of spacing in between each one of them for any kind of slop in the material to kind of fill in those gaps. All right, that looks like it's good. We shouldn't need any kind of supports for that, so let's go ahead and slice it. All right, 85% done. Let's see what it says it's going to take for time here. That's going to take two hours, 58 minutes. So about three hours. It's going to take 95.32 grams of material to print. It's quite a bit of material, but it's a good size case. It's definitely worth it. So let's go ahead and send that over to our export to local. And stick our SD card back in. We'll go export to local. We'll go down to drive F. Let's go ahead and put case and lid here. Alright, so we got case and lid, PETG, that lets me know what material it's sliced for. Alright, so we're ready to go. Alright guys, so here we are at the Creality K1C. We're going to start printing our Tesla turbine. I've got some Creality PETG set up in the machine and ready to go. I've got some Creality Magic Glue Stick sitting on the build plate, that way we don't have any problems with adhesion. Let's go down here and we're going to pick out the file here, and let's go ahead and not do calibration, and then we're going to go ahead and hit print. There we go, that was all we needed to do. Alright guys, we're done printing our Tesla turbines for the hydroelectric project. I've got two different models I printed out. The cases are both exactly the same, there's no difference in the cases. The only difference is in the rotors here. Let me go ahead and show you what we've got going on. The first rotor I printed is at a carbon fiber nylon, and I'm going to tell you something, this thing weighs almost nothing. It's extremely light, it did a pretty good job. There's a slight little bit of warpage to a couple of the blades, but it's really minimal. Won't affect it all that much. The other rotor that we printed here is printed at a copper filled PLA and this thing actually has some mass to it. And if you know anything about the Tesla turbine and what Tesla was trying to do, you know that mass is a huge key to why a Tesla turbine actually works. What Tesla figured out was that a flywheel makes things much more efficient. The bigger the flywheel, the more efficient the engine. And what he was trying to do with the Tesla turbine was find the most efficient way to put a lot of mass or a flywheel into motion with very little resistance as it rotates. So adding mass to your Tesla turbine is definitely going to make for a much more efficient turbine. And these two different designs being very different in weight should give us an idea of what kind of energy increases or decreases that you get by adding mass to your Tesla turbine. We're at the Creality K1C, we're getting ready to do the hydroelectric test on our 3D printed Tesla turbines. And the water flow is a little low this time of year here in Missouri. It's the very end of summer and we haven't had a lot of rain. So I needed to print a new nozzle to actually get enough pressure out of the flow I have right now to efficiently test these turbines. So I've printed this little garden hose attachment nozzle and that goes down to a little two millimeter hole. I'm hoping that'll give us just enough pressure to really get these things up and moving. I'm gonna do a quick preliminary test with this little electric motor as a generator. We've got it hooked up to a nice, powerful, high-speed drill. I've got our voltmeter hooked up to it. I just wanna show you guys what the actual output's gonna be from this little motor as a generator with something as fast and as powerful as a drill. That way it doesn't look so disappointing when we hook this up to the Tesla turbines and you don't see a lot of voltage out of it. You're gonna see that the voltage that we produce by Tesla turbines are actually pretty good compared to the fact that we're gonna now spin this with an electric drill at full speed. You're gonna see a very low amount of output. So let's go ahead and zoom in just a little bit so you can see what the meter shows. All right, there you go. We're gonna go ahead and pick this all up. Let's give this a nice spin up. Full speed, we are getting 0.5 of a volt as a generator or 500 millivolts out of that. Now we're going to take this outside, we're going to hook that up to our Tesla turbines. I just wanted to do this so that you could see that even with a powerful high speed drill hooked up to this electric motor, you're not getting high voltage outputs as a generator. It's, it's really pretty low voltage. All right guys, so we're outside and we're gonna get ready here to do our primary test of both of the Tesla turbines that we just got done printing. I've got them mounted to a test board right now. 
We've got number one right here and number two here. This one's gonna be the Copperfield PLA or the heavier turbine. This one's the carbon fiber nylon or the lighter turbine. We've got a little mount that I've built for an electric motor that we're gonna use as our generator today. You see the splines there on the output for the electric generator. And you can see right here, we've got a spline connector mounted to the top of the output shafts for both of our turbines. So we'll be able to line that up, set that down just like this on top of each one of those once the splines line up. It'll actually lock into place. We'll test out the first turbine. We'll be able to pull it quickly off of there, move it over to the other one, and test out the second turbine. That way we're using the exact same generator in both turbines. That way we can kind of tell which one of them is really going to work better, a lighter or a heavier design. We're also going to test two different output sizes here from our hydroelectric flow. We've got a two millimeter output nozzle on this one. And this one here's got a three millimeter output nozzle. I have a feeling the three millimeter is definitely going to give us better torque. It looks like this one's kind of restricting a lot of the pressure after I turned the valve off. It still had water coming out for quite a long time after I had turned the water off, so it's restricting pressure in the hose, which means we're not actually going to be able to achieve full flow or pressure that we have from our hydroelectric source. The three millimeter looks like it's doing a much better job delivering the full flow and pressure, but we'll give both of those a test to see which one works better. We've got a voltmeter ready to go. That's we'll hook up here to the output leads of the electric motor. So let's go ahead and go down to the hydroelectric shed. I'll divert some of the water flow over to this hose and we'll give these two Tesla turbines that we 3D printed a good test, see which one of them works better. All right guys, so I just gave it a quick test to see if we could even get them to spin with the two millimeter nozzle. It is spinning, but it's not spinning very fast. So let's go ahead and just show you what we did out of the two millimeter nozzle. We'll get it in there. Since these are not the best generators, I'm gonna have to set on so it looks like we're able to get 160 millivolts right around in there. So I'm changing the angle just a little bit as we're going here just to see if I can make it a little more powerful or a little less powerful. Well, really, it looks like, let's say, 158 millivolts out of the lighter weight Tesla turbine with the two millimeter nozzle. Let's switch over to the other turbine. All right, so here we are, we're testing the second turbine out. It took me just a minute to get the thing kind of working right. Looks like when it's set all the way down on there, it was binding just a little bit, reducing the, uh, the ability for the turbine to turn at full speed. If I get it just right, oh, we're over that. We're over the millivolt range. We're gonna have to change the uh, output reading on the meter there. So look at that guys, definitely more output from the same nozzle right now on the turbine that's a little bit heavier. We're actually spiking out the millivolt reading. All right guys, so we're gonna start out with the same one that we left off on. We've got the three millimeter output nozzle. Let's go ahead and hook it up in there and see if we can get this spinning. So let me go ahead and change the meter. There we go. Had my flow angle a little off. So it looks like with a three millimeter output nozzle uh, on our heavier copper filled PLA Tesla turbine, we're getting 0.23, 0.24 millivolts about 250 millivolts of output. All right, so let's go ahead and switch over. All right, guys, so here we go. We got our three millimeter output on our lighter weight turbine. Let's see how well it works. If we get everything just right, looks like we're going to get roughly the same output from both of the turbines. All right, so there was our first test of our hydroelectric Tesla turbines with a pretty weak generator. 